All right, I've got a couple of Craftsman torque wrenches. They're the click style. I've got a uh, problem with the smallest one at least for sure. I'm sure when I bought it, it was already out of adjustment or calibration or not working right. I ended up breaking three bolts off of it. I want to take it back to the store. They only warranty the fixes on the head with the rotating tangs, but nothing on the shaft for the torque wrench. And they can send it in for a fee to have it calibrated at a different store, but it's more than the cost of the wrench. So as far as for me, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and take apart this one because since it doesn't work, it's basically junk. So if I mess it up, then uh, it's no big deal. So first thing is there's a plastic end cap on the end and there's a nut in the bottom. So what I'm going to do is take it's a three quarter inch socket. I'm going to go ahead and take those nuts out at the back side and then start taking it apart from there. All right, so I've got the two three quarter inch nuts taken out and I'm just going to slide this off the back. Okay, so you can see that comes out. And I've got the body here. I believe that's the calibration nut, depending upon where it's threaded, is the calibration. And then it's got these drive pins holding the end piece in. So I'll go ahead and get those drive pins out, and I'll be back. All right, so these drive pins, I'm not being able to get them out anyway. You can't drive them through because of the thread, so somehow they're supposed to come out. I don't want to try and tack weld and pull them out. So what I'm going to try and do is take the piece out through the front side through that snap ring. Uh, also, this end piece is a five millimeter hex, so got that. It is twisted all the way out the back um, to the end, so that's as far as it'll go. So what I'm going to do is try and take this piece out up at the front, a little snap ring. So we'll go from there. All right, so I've got the little snap ring out. Now the drive pin we'll take out. And we'll see the body of the wrench. So that's the wrench. And that's a little groove or the Tang 6 to click out of against the body. And so... I have no idea what's going on in there, so let me try and get that stuff out and see what's going on. Alright, so here we have all the pieces out. Got the wrench body, snap ring, drive pin. As that goes in, you've got a little rectangular pin. You've got the plastic pin with a little hole in it, and that goes in there so that plastic pin rides inside of there we've got a plunger the spring and the end body and then that's the threaded rod at the end so I'm trying to see why this would not click and I'm not sure, so I'm just going to try and clean everything uh, up really good before I grease it and put it back together. But the clicking, as I've read online, is what I understand is this square rod is inside of here. And it rotates back and forth, so as it's tightening, it sits flush, but as it gets to the... Uh, torque that's set, it'll kick over. And then the body of the wrench, this right here, then hits the outside. And that's what you hear when it hits the outside and falls off the, uh, the edge of this little rectangular plug. So as that tilts, it hits the body and makes that tang. And then sometimes on the smaller torque wrenches I've understood, from comments that a lot of times you can just barely feel it. It won't be something loud enough to hear. Uh, so you just need to pay attention to that on the smaller torques. But I'm going to get it all cleaned up and see what I can see for anything that may have been installed improperly. So here the Craftsman's Torque Wrench is completely disassembled. It's got the main wrench body at the top. The 
C-clip, the drive pin. Behind that is the plastic ring that sits in this little hole on the inside. You've got your little rectangular tang that fits in between these grooves. So as it sits in there like this, when you hit the torque, it'll twist and that allows the body to come down and hit the, the wrench to hit the outer part of the body. And then you just got a washer that separates the spring. Again, another washer that goes against the bottom of the body here. And this is a calibration that threads in and out for the adjustment. I believe this is going to be the calibration nut. Um, so then the retain nuts that hold the handle on. So when I took it apart, I didn't see anything damaged or broken. I have read that a lot of times the clip will be broken on the inside, and I'm guessing that refers to this. And there was no extra pieces inside, so I didn't see it uh, broken at all. Something may have just somehow... I'm not sure. So it may have just got set in the wrong position when it got assembled. So let's see if I can get it reassembled and give it a try. I'm going to do a second video on how to check the calibration using a vise and some weight. Uh, so let me go ahead and get this greased up and put back together and see if it works again. I know it's not put together yet, but one thing as I was starting to put it back together, I remembered from reading a lot. It always says on a click wrench to take the load off and turn it back to zero. So you want to get it set back to the lowest setting. Um, on some of my larger ones, it says stop. Other ones, it'll just say zero. So you want to screw that all the way down. The reason being is when it's screwed on, it's actually pushing that rod in against the spring. It's compressing this spring. So with the spring at rest, it's a certain length. But if we continually have that handle cranked down, it'll shorten that spring and it'll put a preload on it. So that spring will stay stored in the toolbox or wherever with that spring compressed, preloaded, and over time that spring can weaken and reset its overall length to a shorter length. And so your calibration uh, would be off. So that's what I've read and how I understand it, that the spring needs to be, or the handle needs to be turned down to zero so the spring can be all the way at rest and not compressed to reduce its, its strength in life. All right, the one thing I'll say about um, reinstalling this is it looks to me like, because it's a rectangle, not a square, it looks to me like it goes with the longest face perpendicular to the other tang. So that's what it looks like to me, so that's how I'm going to reinstall it. All right, so it's mostly reassembled. All the internals are back in. I just need to put the handle back on and do the three quarter inch nuts. The thing that I found as I was putting it back together, there's some engravings. So let's see if you can read it. So this is inch pound inch pounds. If you can read that. On the other side, it is Newton meters. So when I bought the wrench, before I took it apart, the Newton meters was on the top, which means not where the socket attaches, um, but Newton meters would have been on the top, so it would have been oriented like this, with Newton meters right on the top. Well, I don't use Newton meters as far as most of the references that I have, but they're written in inch pounds, and so I wanted to be able to more easily read the inch pounds on the top, so when I put it back together, I actually, because it's just a rod with uh, the drive pin, I just reinstalled it 180 degrees. So now the top of the wrench opposite the socket end now reads inch pounds. Well as I was putting together, remember there was the plastic clip that went in the little plastic C clip and that's what you can see right there uh, on the inside. So make sure you get that in. I realized that a lot of torque wrenches when I was reading online only torque in the tightened direction. So if you have left hand threads most torque wrenches aren't going to work. You're going to have to use a beam style torque wrench or spend more money on one that will torque in both directions. And so I was realizing that this plastic little C-clip, because where the little rectangular um, pin is, it's right below it, right down here. So that little plastic C-clip in actuality would prevent 
the <clears throat> rod of the wrench head from going in one direction. So if the plastic clip is on this side, you can see it's 90 degrees to the top, that means that the wrench cannot go this way, it cannot go to the left, which means if the pin there reaches the torque and the head wants to click one direction, it can only click down this direction, which means in the tightening. And so if this was upside down, then it would only click in the left-hand thread orientation. So I already put it on my vise and checked it, and sure enough, it clicks just fine now. So as I understand, for the way that this is assembled, when I bought it from the Craftsman store, this whole sleeve was rotated 180 degrees, preventing it from clicking in the right orientation. So quality control was pretty poor at the factory for this. I'm going to go ahead and put the handle and the 3 quarter inch nuts on. All right, as I'm putting this back together, what I want to do is I want to make sure that zero mark right here is lined up with this horizontal line right here. So as I bring it down the splines, it comes back to the zero. All right, so now it's completely reassembled. I've got my inch pounds on the top. Now it's hard to see. The zero mark is at 25, which is the lowest. I've got the nuts in the end. So if I need to adjust it, it's at five millimeter Allen um, that I need to turn in the bottom. So I have to loosen the nuts a little bit, turn that. Um, so the tools that I used to take this thing apart, I've got my three quarter inch socket, five millimeter Allen, a screwdriver to help get the retaining pin off the C-clip, and a little um, awl to be able to pull down or to pull the pieces out. Uh, also a grease gun to grease those pieces in the middle. All right, so it's all put back together. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and see if I can get a click on the vise again. All right, so here I have the torque wrench installed with the head and the vise to keep it in place. And what I'm gonna do is now, like it's already set down at 25 inch pounds, and I'm gonna go ahead and See? Right there. So if you can tell, the head is turning on. Alright, so before it would never do that. So I'm, I'm claiming success at this point. I just need to check the calibration, and that's going to involve uh, putting it in on the vertical plane, uh, but in orientation horizontal. We'll use some known weights and measurements to then do that. But for right now, um, I'm satisfied with putting it together. I think the only problem with this one was, from the factory, it was turned 180 degrees, so it would only go in the opposite direction. Uh, but now you can see it actually does its little click. All right, and like I said, on these new, smaller ones, the inch pounds, a lot of times you won't hear the click. You'll just feel it, so that's what you're looking for. All right, success on taking it apart and putting it back together, finding out the uh, manufacturer's problems of assembly. Thanks.